Hello and welcome to On Your Lane. This is the best place for ambitious people who are taking charge of their lives, making that income, making that impact, and living fulfilling lives. And today I'm talking about entrepreneurship, the lessons that I've learned in entrepreneurship. My goodness, I have been an entrepreneur for about, let's see, seven or eight years. Oh my goodness. Okay, that's like two bachelor's degrees. Two. All right, but I have been an entrepreneur for a little bit, but I have been like a career person for longer and that transition was hard and growing in this field has been interesting and I would like to help you avoid the mistakes that I've made and build on them, right? So that you can build the dream, the vision that you have and move towards the impact and the income that you want to create. I was just doing the math. I have been an entrepreneur for six, <laughs> six years. I became an entrepreneur in the same year my son was born, and so he's six years old. So I haven't been an entrepreneur for eight, but for six, whew, okay, still a lot. Still have amazing lessons that you can learn. First one, let me give you some background. Okay, so I was an accountant for about 12 or more years. I went to accounting school, got my degree, then became a chartered accountant. And then after that, I worked in that field for about 12 years. In different roles and one of the highest roles I was in was finance manager for a bank it was an exciting role and when I was in that role it was like the trajectory was clear right um, people would call me for interviews and they wanted me to be CFO of different companies and so I was clear on the next step what would happen I'd become CFO of a smaller company and then because I was super ambitious always been I thought okay the next thing would be CFO for a bigger company then maybe CEO of a big company the trouble with that plan was that I didn't like my job. So every time I got a promotion, instead of celebrating, I would always feel like, oh my goodness, more responsibilities in a field I don't want. You know, when I say a field I don't want is I'm smart, so I can learn a few things. But you know, when it's forced learning, like when you're reading something and you, you hate it, but you're still reading because you're like, okay, I just have to get it done. That's how I was doing accounting. I would be like, oh my goodness, these things are boring. Oh my goodness, I don't like this. Oh my goodness, it's making my head heat up really fast. But I would still go like, shake it off, get it done. And so I went through like that. And it got to a place where I was like, you know what? I don't want a promotion. I need to make a change. And I ignored that feeling for a long time. I complained and I prayed about it. And in our prayer times, I would complain in my prayer times. I, I was like just complaining and worried and and dissing my role, dissing my bosses. And it took so much time, so much sweat. And I got to the end of myself. I just decided to get up and walk away. So I got up and walked away from that role, my finance manager role. And that was a big deal, but I was tired. And the freedom I felt after walking away from that was amazing. But what I didn't do was understand what I was walking into. Entrepreneurship was so different from me being corporate. My work ethic was not going to survive. My attitude was not going to survive. And because I had been like fighting the desire to live for a long time, I had become bitter. I had become angry. I had become a certain person that couldn't thrive in the open space of entrepreneurship. And so the lessons that I share are coming from that space where I was transitioning. And after I transitioned, I learned my mistakes and started to build on a different foundation. That's the process I'll share. First lesson that I learned is who you are affects your business. Okay, if you're an angry person, you build an angry business. If you are a dishonest person, you build a dishonest business. It's just common sense. Who you are affects your business. And so sometimes we want an organized, uh, flourishing, focused business with excellence when in your life you're not that. You can't build something you're not. Right? So your business flows from you as a person. And I didn't know that because I was angry and bitter where I was coming from. I had been in a place where I needed to make a change, but I was ignoring it and complaining. Therefore, building a different type of attitude in me. I didn't know that I couldn't just switch that off and say, oh, I'm free. Now I'm going to become a different person. I carried that bitter, angry, disorganized person with me. And I started building a business that looked like that. And I hated it. And because I was benefiting from the structure of a corporate office, when I started building my own structures and they didn't look like corporate, I would freak out. I would shout, I would like throw tantrums everywhere because I was like, things have to be orderly. But I wasn't orderly. So everybody I attracted was not orderly and everything people found was not orderly. So it was a mess. Now, if you want your business to grow, the challenge will be grow yourself. So then when you say I am organized, 
your business will become organized. I am focused, your business will become focused. And I was so spontaneous, my business was spontaneous. So today we're growing tomatoes. Tomorrow we are growing tomatoes, lettuce, onions, and, and so many things. And if you know anything about agriculture, you can't do that. That's a recipe for disaster. And that's what I was doing because that's who I was. And so when I started growing, I started realizing that, oh, I can't attract what I'm not. So I have to change my person. I have to change how I show up in my personal life. I have to change my work ethic. I have to change and be a person of excellence. Then that will reflect in the business that you build. You are your business. Who you are, your limitations will also reflect in your business. So if you want to change, if you want to go far, you have to go into personal development, cultivate yourself, self-mastery, because when you do that, it will show up in your business as well and it will help you move forward and build a good reputation that will even work for you. Another lesson, oh, just because it's profitable and it will make money doesn't mean you should do it. Yep. I, would, I can list businesses I've done and I did them because it was just like, whoa, we'll make money in this. We did the math and we're like, whoa, we'll make money out of this. Something I wasn't interested in, something I did not do much research on, something I cared little about, an industry I didn't care about, like stuff like that. So I've been in fashion. I have, uh, I used to travel to a certain country to buy things, to sell. You know, um, what other business have I done? I have been in a cake business. I can't think on top of my head so many other businesses, but I have tried so many things. And it always backfired because after a certain point, I was like, oof, I don't want to do this. You know, even on the farm that I was running, I would just like grow this and grow that, grow this. Why? Because somebody would tell me, that, oh, there's money in rice. Oh, there's money in green papers. And I'm like, okay, I'm doing that now. And the work that it takes to grow something is not like that. Just because there is a potential in money for you when you are raising pigs doesn't mean you should raise pigs. Are you interested in pigs? You know the dynamics of it. Are you going to invest your time consistently in the pig raising business? Are you going to do that? If you're not, then back away from it. Profitability is not an open door for you. Say, okay, it's profitable, I walk in. Because there's so much that is needed for you to succeed in business. So please take note of that. What I would say, though, on the other end is notice your interests, notice your passion, notice your skills, and then let those inform what business you do, right? Nothing else. Because everything is profitable. Growing every crop is profitable. Raising animals, factories, mining, those things are profitable, but not for everybody. So your skill set, your, your passion, your experience, everything will come together to move you forward. The other thing is, whatever you are trying to build, whatever business you're doing, will put a demand on you. It will put a demand on your budget, it will put a demand on your time, and therefore you have to be clear. Are you willing to pay the price? Because sometimes you want to build a business that is successful and you want it to start as a corporate, fully formed, fully running business. At least that's what I wanted. So I wanted something like to just flow, you know, but the work of making things flow, I didn't want to do. And that ties back to the point of saying, you are your business and you will reflect in your business. So whatever you want to build will mean work. So you need to maybe subscribe to courses. You need to self-educate. You need to read some books. You need to get some mentors. That's work. You need to cut out your entertainment time and now invest in yourself as a person and learn about your business. Invest in books and coaching, so much work. Even just waking up earlier, just so you can get things done, making sacrifices. Your business will put a demand on you. I'm not saying kill yourself for the business. You need your rest. You need to be fresh. You need to be having fun and finding it exciting. But it will require you to work, to have a certain work ethic and be expectant of it and create room in your life for it. The next thing is you will be lonely. Because not everybody's up here building businesses. Not everybody's out here being entrepreneurial, right? Because most people don't feel the need to put their lives on risk like that. But you have to use this loneliness wisely. Use the lonely time to sharpen your skills. For me, when I started making these changes, I really struggled because I love people. I love being surrounded by people. And I love us talking about the same things. Oh, how is your business going? And I had nobody like that. And so I was like, oh, I want people. But what happened was during that time, I started getting clarity on what I was trying to build, who I was, what my issues were. All right, so we might say, okay, I'm busy and everything. But when you are alone, it allows you to ask yourself these deep questions. Eh? Deep questions like, it's not working, is it? And you're like, oh. <laughs> and then when you are like I found myself doing this where I am getting these deep questions and these questions are convicting me and I'm like okay I need friends I need to hang out with people because I'm trying to pacify these questions I'm trying to cover them 
you know so loneliness is good because it allows you to build private disciplines it allows you to be able to see how convicted about this are you are you going to feel lonely and think i'm gonna quit i need people and then you quit on it are you going to push through the loneliness and say you know what this is what i've chosen and before you know it when you push through the loneliness the right people will start stepping into your life but there'll be a season where you have to be separated and it's a blessing because it allows you clarity without contamination of people's thoughts people's opinions and stuff like that so be open to this loneliness and embrace it and use that free time use that alone time to commune with god commune with your inner self and get a clear way forward the other thing is you need faith oh man you need faith because you're building right if I'm building a house, I have a clear picture in my mind, but it looks like a mess, right? In my mind, there should be tiles, lights, and, and beautiful walls, and all these beautiful ceilings and plants. But in the meantime, it looks like a mess. It takes faith for you to keep working in that mess, knowing that beauty is going to come from it. I don't know how you guys do it without faith, but I don't think it's, it's really possible to joyfully build something without faith. You need to have faith. You need to have a relationship with God so that when life hits you and it will, if you're building a business, when challenges hit you and they will, if you're building a business, you can be able to say that I will prevail. I am bigger than this. I'm stronger. I'm supported. I'm cared for. So build faith. Set aside time to just cultivate faith. Read your Bible. Pray. And then just cultivate that. Get some teachings that teach you God's ideas for business and stuff like that. Build that faith because it allows you to stay focused in spite of everything and everything will show up. Everything will challenge you, but you will prevail because your faith will be strong and your faith will be backed by action, right? And you'll keep moving forward. Another thing you need is a learning attitude. I think this is connected, right? But always learning. I struggled with this because I read a lot and I had this mindset where I thought I know everything. <laughs> I know everything. So even when I was listening to somebody in my head, I was like, oh, what a waste of time. I know the answers to these things. It sounds cocky, but maybe it is cocky, but I was like that. I didn't want to learn. I always felt offended. Like if you brought an idea and mine was failing, I felt like I need to defend my idea. And because I can be loud, I would defend the idea and feel like I have won. So in actual sense, I could have learned a few things from this person if I had given them time. And looking back, I was like, I wish I had gotten a mentor sooner. No, but every time I got a mentor, I'd be like, they're not Jeff Bezos, they're not Bill Gates. And so they don't know what they're doing, but no. You know, I have had mentors now and they have helped me so much because you want people who are honest with you and they can tell you that mm, this is messed up. Mm, you're not going far. Mm, you need to revisit this. Even the Bible says in the multitude of advice, there is success. You know, there's a victory. So have a learning attitude. Okay. Everybody who comes across your path can teach you something. So if you shut your mouth and hear it, if you disagree, you can disagree, but give room to learn and to grow. The other thing is discipline. Discipline is important. I've talked about it, um, I think, in the other points. But discipline, I should highlight it, is important. Have a structure to your day. When do you do what? When do you do what? What are the key movers in your business? Are you going to give them time or not? Because sometimes we're busy looking at a logo, trying to fix a logo. When it actually says you should be going out getting clients. So there are a lot of things that will require discipline. And discipline is uncomfortable, but it's really necessary. It builds a better version of you. Another thing is character. Your character matters. Your character can preserve you where your talent can push you any further, okay? So your talent and your vision and your hard work will get you somewhere, but your character can sustain. So have good character. Like I said, your business is an extension of you, so your character has to be solid for you to go far in business. I hope these were helpful for you because these are things I wish I had known when I was starting. I would have prepared and been intentional about opening up places or spaces in my life to learn these things and to be like really equipped with knowledge, be equipped with company that was right. I wish I had done that. And I hope you do this. I hope you share this to somebody who needs encouragement. We entrepreneurs need a lot of that. So forward this to somebody who needs an encouragement, like, share, subscribe. And if you need more resources, free ones, check out these videos over here on entrepreneurship, on faith, and they will help you move forward. If you want to get deeper and build a business that is meaningful, not just a business where you're just chasing everything, but a business that is focused and is going to bring results, check out the Purpose Masterclass. It's an amazing class that I teach that helps you discover your purpose. And when you build your business from that place of purpose, it's going to be amazing. It's going to be powerful. So thank you for stopping by. New videos every Tuesday. 
podcast every Thursday. Check them out. Links in the description. I'll talk to you soon.